groove on home yeah, ice here? It, it'll take two or three days to get off the road. It always does. Um, got part way through it today. Uh, tomorrow will be an important start to that home, but you've you've got to. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter where you're winning games. You just got to win a bunch of games. Home seems to be a place the teams are comfortable, and certainly Florida Panthers here in this building have been a really strong team. So we want to keep that going. We saw Hornquist and Ekblad both on the ice today. Just what's the latest on both of them? Yeah, I, I would expect Patrick. I don't have his upper body. I, I think I'll have a better answer for you toward the weekend. But we expect Darren to be back in the lineup Saturday. And That's what we're. It appeared like he left early practice. You saw him at the beginning, and I didn't see him. Yeah, he's so when they when they bring a guy back, the first practice usually isn't with us; it's with medical people. They push him real hard, make sure he feels good, and then uh, I would expect we'll see him on the ice. Well, we won't skate Thursday, so Friday will be a team practice, Coach, possibly. That's what we're shooting for. Sorry about that, Coach. Overall, how would you assess the road trip? What you liked, maybe what needs to be a little yeah. Yeah, it, it's okay. It was there's chunks and I guess you you want to fight that urge for the perfect game. I thought our special teams improved over the course of the trip, and that was important because it was a bit of a, a lag on us for sure. I had liked our five on five. Did love our third periods in the first two games. Um, really like the fight in this group. They don't quit. I like the way we closed Anaheim out. I thought we were real strong, especially four and six on back to back for us that we were real strong in the third period, which is the most difficult period, I think, on the road trip. So I think I would say there's a whole bunch of things that we want to get better at, and we're moving in the right direction on all of them. You still fight that urge you want it perfect now, um, but the other team's going to touch the puck too. So, yeah, I'm happy with where we're going. With that play out, some guys have really been loving some heavy moments. Uh, yeah. Tour especially. It seems like he's been thriving. Yeah, so he's capable for sure. He's an exceptionally fit guy, and and we were saying the same thing, you know, toward the end of the third period there in Anaheim. The amount of hockey that he had on him, I mean, he looked fresh. He looked fine, like he could play another period, no problem. So, but the concern, it's not a concern. The thing to be mindful of, what happens, he's got to go back to a reasonable number. Uh, when Aaron comes back, we'll be able to balance a lot more. And it's not just that Aaron's going to take all those minutes. It strengthens other pairs so they can all play, a, uh, and we need that. And we need the same thing to happen to Barkov. His minutes are too high right now. But as your team gets stronger, you can roll the fourth line a little bit more. But they've been really good. I mean, Brandon Montour is... I still think, and it's not just based on points, on overall quality of play has lots of upside left. And, and uh, as he gets more experience in that either shutdown role or the kind of that bigger minute role, I think he's going to thrive. I think he's, he's, he's earned it. He's worked hard at it. He's, he's pushed himself to be in great shape, so now he can operate at a high level. And you've talked about guys with that second chance. I mean, people were in Buffalo were a little done with him when he came. You know what? It's, it's, not a, it's not a function of the program or the city it's a function of the time of the organization because it's it's happened here in florida too right like when you're in that developing young player time there you, you get you get to the point where okay we, we're developing young players but now we want to start winning games and then you get defensemen up the ice right they're chasing games they're not good enough to win them so they're chasing games i think it's hard for defensemen i had you know uh, um tyler myers won the calder and I think he went through that happens to be Buffalo, but it's the same idea when you're that when you're an offensive defenseman and you're on a team that's chasing the game because they're young and they're and they're in that rebuild, your game changes and you almost don't develop parts of your game because of it. And now he's with a team that's a little bit stronger, that can win games, that he can develop other parts of his game, the defensive, the patience part of his game, right? You, you become a defenseman that every time he touches the puck or the team rushes the puck, you're jumping in because you need to because you're already down one. It's only 10 minutes into the first. And that affects your game. I think Brandon's got the ability to be a patient kind of pick his spots guy that can play big minutes. But he's at the right time in the NHL because there are very few defensemen that skate like that guy. I remember we talked a lot about Hepaniemi during training camp. How much during camp did he put himself in position to be this first call-up? Oh, he had a really, really good camp and an eye-opener, right? The stats don't say uh, what he will offer. They, he, he's a very bright man, and he's got a good sense of hands. And, and he, not safe play first, because he'll make a creative play, but he's just exceptionally smart. So 
The question will be durability for Heppel. Like he, he, he can play in the National Hockey League. How many games can he string together? How many games will the coach give him an opportunity to string together? That has something to do with it too. But he had a very good camp and you walk, players that are that smart will always be very useful to your team. Do you notice a certain level of professionalism about him too? Because he's had a couple call-ups over the last couple of years. No, he handles it all like a pro. I think he gets it. I think that's all part of it. He's very, like I say, a very bright guy and he knows um, what he needs to do to be ready to prepare and he values an opportunity. You know, he's, there's no ego to him other than there's confidence to him, but there's no, certainly no arrogance to his game. And how much do you love putting him next to a guy like Eric Stahl? He's got almost 1,300 games. I can probably teach him a, a thing or two out there. Yeah, you know what? I, th I think what I like about it is that because Heppo is a smart player, Eric can read him. You know, he knows where the puck's going. He knows that he, he, Eric can figure out what the next smartest play that should happen is. Heppo's going to make that play and Eric can read off him. So, um, they will, they will, with, even without a lot of communication, they'll be able to play off each other. Was there any conversation you had with him? I mean, he obviously, in normal days, would have made this team out of camp. He doesn't because of the numbers and the salary cap. Right. Do you, do you talk to him like, hey man, just keep doing what you're doing, that kind of Yeah, thing? my conversations with players are almost solely based on hockey, and, and they're not related to the numbers game because there's always a numbers game, and there's always a cap. It, it, with every team, there's a player that gets that, you know, Got a couple older guys ahead of you. Whatever it is, the line that's used, that's that's ubiquitous. So only talk about hockey. The things that we liked, the things, the area that we want to see improved. Um, there was no long list of areas to improve, but he's got to, to kind of show that durability every chance he gets. Apologies if you were asked the sun post game Sunday, but no problem. Uh, Spencer Knight, just thoughts on the game outside of that one sequence in the second period. Yeah. And then the, the five games overall, how would you evaluate him to this point? I love his numbers because he wins hockey games. So I really don't care what it looks like when you're winning games. The the sequence that you referenced, uh, I think it's a bad break on the tip because those are very difficult and he has no chance on that second one. And then he was really solid, moved the puck. Um, so we're, we're, we're kind of, you, you know what, we, we'd like to. I don't want to, I'd like to give both these guys an opportunity to get on a bit of a run. We're not looking for somebody to run 15 games because it makes no sense to run a goal. I mean, we'd like to win 15 games, that's <laughs> not my point. But two or three games in a row, get feeling good. Uh, Spencer looks like he's turning in that direction and, and uh, he can take it. And you want to get him into a rhythm. I mean, that was the thing last year. It's all rhythm for both guys. Yeah, I, I, and, and we will do what we feel we need to do to get one of these guys on a run. Um, but the opportunity will be there for both of them. We have complete confidence in both guys, and, and I don't want either one of these guys sitting on a bench for a long period of time. I, I, some of this is, it doesn't cost you anything to do that now. It's, it, we're not gonna t cost our team wins by going back and forth a little bit, but you just look at our January. And if we, we're going to need both goaltenders feeling good, feeling strong that entire month, December into January, such an incredibly heavy schedule, so that we're kind of priming these two guys for that. And real, just real quick, we don't know what's going to happen with tomorrow with the storm. Yeah. And everything. What kind of preparations have you guys been doing just in case the game right. is so, it Yeah, so uh, Bill Zito would be in contact with the people that will make that decision regularly. I, I've told the players, you will prepare to play this game until you hear something different. We have an idea, we may have an idea by the end of the afternoon, but we'll just do our normal preps uh, f as if the game's played. If it's canceled uh, because of the weather, we'll probably take an off day so that you guys don't have to come to the rink, so the players <laughs> don't have to come to the rink, uh, and then we'll go back to work next on Thursday. Okay, so Thursday, would, oh, the off day would move to Wednesday? If, if I can, I have to okay. get, we have to get permission from the Players Association and the league, but the idea would be I'd shift off days, yes. Verde has been very efficient this season. I think yeah. eight goals on 35 shots after last season he scored, you know, 25, 24 goals in the whole season. What do you right. think is responsible for that um, uptick in performance for him? I don't know if the shot's different. I wasn't here, right? Mm -hmm. I know that um, we have strived for him to understand that he's a shooter and to embrace that. When you play with Barkov, uh, Sasha will do things on the ice that will make him appear always open because he kind of is, right? Even if he's beside a guy, you know he can get into that hole. And there's a tendency sometimes to shooters, especially if they're not completely confident in what it is they do for a living. I don't know if that's the right set of words, but they'll look to defer to a player. Almost everybody will defer to Sasha 
which in turn he is deferring to everybody else, and then we're passing the puck all over the ice. That's a problem. I need a shooter on that line, and Barkov will be the first person to say, shoot the puck every chance you get. Now, he, he doesn't. He's still going to try to make plays, but he has to have a primary driver for what he does for a living, and he shoots the puck. So he shoots the puck a little bit more, and he scores. So that just gets more shots, right? Well, it's okay. The guys don't mind if I shoot. And I'm scoring. It's okay if I shoot, and then you know, and then they'll get to a threshold where he shoots everything and say, hey, "Buddy, I was wide open on the other side." And then he'll—it's all a little ebb and flow. Right now, we think he's trending in the right direction to shoot everything that touches a stick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.